making that that many turnovers when the game was right there in their grasp. And, and Fish, you just saw the Miami Heat right there. Jimmy Butler with 28 points. Victor Oladipo did go out with that knee. He was kind of feeling his kneecap after mm -hmm. the dunk, but he had 18. Tyler Hero off the bench, four or five from three. Um, this is a team that we know has the ability to get hot, as we saw last year in the bubble. And right now they're kind of making their move. They're in that, like, five, six, four range here in the, in the Eastern Conference. Yeah, early in the season, I think, you know, a little bit of... Uh, fatigue. Think, yeah, a little bit of fatigue. You know, kind of still feeling the effects of last season, losing in the finals, uh, trying to figure themselves out in terms of what version of, you know, the heat they're going to be this year. Turnovers were their problem early in the season. 22 turnovers, I think, per game, or at least... 22 points given up off turnovers per game. And they've slowly gotten that down to where they're only giving up 11, 12 points per game off turnovers. Lakers forced the Heat into 20 turnovers tonight, which, which is good for the Lakers defense. But they take care of the basketball. They shoot free throws well. They take high percentage threes. Butler plays at a pace, you know, that's difficult to really force him into many mistakes. And, they, you know, they look like a team that you still have to watch out for in the East even though Brooklyn and Philly, you know, get most of the attention and, and along with the Bucks. Let's talk a little Lakers. Uh, Dennis Schroeder, I think Billy and <clears throat> Stu said this. What a bizarre line when you looked at, he had 14 assists, the six rebounds, but then he also had the seven turnovers. And James, I took him at the end of the pregame show as a take my shot because I thought this would be a big offensive game. I thought they would need that with those four guys out. He had the looks. He just struggled. Uh, just two for 12. He had that late bucket. He was really one for 11. He didn't have his first field goal till late fourth quarter. I mean, I, I don't know for sure, but uh, Shooter is a high energy player. Mm -hmm. And I mean, when you play the way he plays every night, picking up people full court, getting through picks, diving on floors, and, you know, running the offense, he didn't look all the way sharp tonight. Maybe, maybe just a little bit of fatigue for him. Uh, based on you know the minutes he's playing, the way he plays, his you know passes weren't as crisp. He's not that type of player that makes that type of line during the game. So I don't know for sure, but I know in the last month or so he's taken on a big load of minutes. So sometimes you have those type of games, unfortunately. I want to ask you, as a coach, when you look at his game, are you looking at the, hey, he's still doing other things? It's a bad shooting night. Everyone has it. He tried to get through it, but he did have 14 assists, and he did have six rebounds, but then you also look at seven turnovers. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, Dennis is a guy that's impacting the game through more than field goal attempts and how many field goals he makes. The, the defensive pressure, the pressure on the basketball, forcing a team like Miami into 20 turnovers when they're only averaging about 13 or 14 uh, in recent games. Mm -hmm. Like, he was a big part of that. Um, some of the game notes that our producers put together for us, most assists to one player from Dennis Schroeder since March 20th. Hmm. Kyle Kuzma, 15. Mark Gasol, 12. Those two guys didn't Not play tonight. Yeah. <laughs> then Montrez Harrell, 12, who plays less minutes with Andre Drummond in the lineup. So all of a sudden now Dennis is doing his normal thing, but he doesn't have the same guys out there that he's used to passing to where they like it, when to pass it. And those things, you know, they impact you as a point guard. He'll find his way. Yeah. Yeah, I think you bring up a great point.